All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akar Kadash. They will honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on how there's currently in this world right now two different types of of, of people, man. Like there's be, there's been been a division of two different types of people, and those two different types of people are those that will willingly wear masks versus those that won't willingly wear masks, and those that also um those that also don't want to have um, syringes put in their arms and those that will willingly have syringes put in their arms. So I'll say that again. There's two different groups of people out there right now. Those that don't, don't, won't just wear a mask every single place that they go and aren't willing to have syringes put in their arms versus those that are willing to wear a mask every single place that they go and do whatever they're told and are willing to have syringes put in their arms. And ultimately, these two different groups of people are being separated by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. And ultimately, Yahweh is going to just make these people take the take the chip, man. He's going to pick, pick out of these people, people that are going to take the chip because men's men's decisions are not of themselves. It's of Yahweh, what decisions a man makes. This is Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. Man's goings of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So when these people are thinking that it's them, making themselves not take the chip, them making themselves not do this, not do that. Really, it's Yahweh making himself not do it. It's not It's not them making themselves not do it. Or it's not them making themselves do it. Yahweh is the one that's causing them to do these things because through decisions that different people have made and ultimately through um, predestination, men have already been chosen to either take the mark of the beast or not take it. And I'll get a scripture on that. And when you understand the scriptures... And you really have read them, read through them a couple of times over certain scriptures over and over again. You understand that predestination is within the Bible. This is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined, so like being predestined according to the purpose of him who work of all things after the counsel of his own will. So when people was thinking that day, when people was thinking that day made, made themselves rich, or when people was thinking that they made themselves strong, that was Yahweh that made that person rich, or that was Yahweh that made that person strong. And just like how when a person is sick, it was it was Yahweh that made them sick. It wasn't of it's not of no own no man's own free will that he does anything good in his life. Now let me get a scripture on that. This is first chapter chapter two and verse six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive, he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. So Yahweh's Yahweh's in control of every single thing and this includes who's going to take the RFID chip which is the mark of the beast and that's why Believing in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and having faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and having faith in the name of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shai is more important than anything else that you can do. And even that faith is given to you. But the scriptures say, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. So if, if you're staying diligent continually, well, that's a sign that you might very well be of the elect. Whereas if you're not being diligent, then that's a sign that you're not of the elect. That's a sign that you're. That's a sign that you're not chosen. But if you are chosen, there's not anything that can stop you from being chosen. And I'll just quickly get a scripture on that. This is Romans chapter eight and verse thirty-three. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth? Who is he that condemneth? It is a Mashiach that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of Yahweh? Who also maketh intercession for us? So if you're chosen, you're chosen. There's no. There's no way to not be chosen, man. It's impossible to not be chosen. So if someone is selected to be of the elect, if someone's selected to be of the elect, there's no way that they cannot make it. And if someone's selected to be a demon and to just be a loser, they're going to be that. They're going to be that, man. If someone's selected to be a scoffer, they're going to be that. And there's no way that they can come out of that character that has been selected for them to play out upon the face of the earth because as I read earlier in the lesson 
which I'll go back to it again. This is Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. Man's goings are of Yahweh. How can a man then understand his own way? And that's why when you're when you're seeing people, if you understand these things, and if you're seeing people that are believing in Yahweh by Shimia Shai, you have to analyze them spiritually, man, because if that person's doing the things that the scriptures say that they're supposed to do, then who are you to try and disrespect that person and, and, and try and come up against them and, and scoff against what they're doing when they're doing what the scriptures say a person of the elect would do? Instead, you should leave that person alone. Leave that person alone and you can't be scoffing at a person that's been teaching the word of the Lord for 35 plus years before before you might have even been born, right? And, and trying to say that they ain't nothing when that person is doing what the scriptures say somebody would be doing. And if you understand that men don't have their own free will, then if you don't see that they're veer, veering away from that, then how can you then how can you then have a problem and say anything against them? And it doesn't make any sense. Yet again, because men the men don't have their own free will, they've even been designed to do that because ultimately every single thing that's happening on the face of the earth is in Yahweh's power and he's just using every single person on the earth to play a role. Some people have big roles. Some people have a small role in the grand in the grand scheme of things, but everyone on the earth ultimately their role matches up to um and 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 counts towards what's going to happen on the earth and and according to prophecy of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is Revelation chapter four and verse eleven. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So Yahweh made even Esau, which I'll I'll bring this out now. Yahweh made even Esau to play out a certain role. He made Esau to be the wicked and to be destroyed. Which now, I'll, 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 since I mentioned this, I'll go into this a bit. This is Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So what that's saying there, is that there was two children born and we know that these children are Jacob and Esau and that even though Jacob hadn't did nothing good and even though Esau hadn't did nothing evil, God chose to love one and hate the other. Now, men would say that this is evil or say that this is unrighteous, but is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. God forbids there to be unrighteousness with him because God's ways are not our ways. God's gave us certain laws that we have to follow but those, those laws are not what he's bound by. Those are the laws that he's made us be bound by. And if we don't keep those laws, we die. But if we do keep those laws, we get everlasting life. And I'll, I'll go, I can go into that as well. This is um, Romans chapter 9 and verse, 12, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is that unrighteousness with God? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I have compassion on whom I have compassion because God chose certain people again that he's going to have mercy on and certain people that he's going to have compassion on. Certain people that he's going to harden as well. Verse 16, so then it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. So um, a man can't make himself be chosen. It's not possible. A man can live his life according to what the chosen is supposed to do and, and according to what a person is supposed to do. But at the end, in the last days, in the end times, if he is not of the chosen, something is going to happen that's going to make him not be of the chosen man and that will ultimately be him taking the MOTB. That'll be him taking the MOTB, man. Let me carry on. Let me carry on on this. Verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name will be declared for all the earth. So, even even Pharaoh, when you read the scriptures, even Pharaoh was chosen to do certain things that God that God had predestined for him to do. Verse 18, Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. So God's, God's got certain people, as I, like I've, I've been saying throughout the lesson, God's got certain people that he's going to have mercy on, and certain people that he's not going to have mercy on. And he's, even, even though some of the people that he's going to have mercy on might have did certain things that are bad, He's still going to have mercy on those people, even though they might have did sins unto death, just like how King David did sins unto death, but Yahweh had mercy on him, which is why the scriptures say, give me the tender mercies of David, roughly paraphrasing. 
um, verse 18, Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. That was saying then unto me, why did he yet find fault for who have resisted his will? But Yahweh has made certain things bad, made certain things good. Because within all the things that Yahweh has made, he's made two and two. One, 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 one thing and then the other thing, he's balanced it out. So if he's made good people, he's going to balance it out with bad people. If he's made if he made bad people, he'll balance it out with good people. If he's made short people, he'll balance it out with tall people. If he's made ugly people, he'll balance it out with pretty people, beautiful people. If he's made strong people, he'll balance it out with the weak. If he's made humans be born with two arms, he'll also balance it out with humans that have been born with missing arms. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1, a false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight and he's did that within all the things that he's made upon the face of the earth he's made he's made a balance to all things that he's made he's made he's made um plagues but with with each plague there's a cure it's just that men don't know all the all the ways to balance out certain plagues that are upon the face of the earth right now men men just don't know don't know these things at the moment yeah I'll end the uh, I'll end the lesson there. I've, I think I've made the, uh, I think I've made the point. I don't want to make it too long, but it's just um, Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh Shai has made men follow His will, and it's oh, in fact, let me Salakia, let me carry on on Romans nine, Salakia. I wanted to make a point on this. This is Romans chapter nine, and verse nineteen. Thou wilt say that unto me, why do I forget find fault, for who have resisted His will? Neighbor, old man, who art dad replies against God, shall the thing form say to him that formed it, why have thou made me thus so? Where are the creations of Yahweh? But we can't say to Yahweh, why have you made me an Israelite? I wanted to, I would have wanted to be an Edomite and rule by the sword, even though I'm going to get destroyed. Or an Edomite can't say, why have you made me an Edomite and made me be a ruler of the rule of kingdoms? But now I'm going to have to get destroyed in in the last times. You can't, you can't, you, you can't do that. You can't try and think you can choose your role in your Howard's movie because ultimately he could have not gave you any role. Verse 20, neighbor, old man, who art dad replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Have not the pot of power of the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So doesn't God have the ability to make out of all the humans he's made, some humans that he's going to give honor to and some humans that he's going to destroy and give dishonor to? He does have the ability to do that. Just like how when men make things, men can men can make things that they give honor to, and can make things that they give dishonor to. A man can make a um, um, can make a bucket that he throws rub a, a container that he throws rubbish in, but a man can also make I've made that same container. A container that looks exactly the same, and he puts jewels in there, but one's for rubbish, and and one is for is for nicer things that people that people hold more dear than that. Verse um, 21, have not the part of power over the power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour and another unto dishonour? What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he ever fore prepared unto glory? So God can do what he wants to do, man. Ultimately God can do what he wants to do. God can do what he wants to do. There's a there's an Edomite just standing in front of in front of me where I am right now, just looking at me. These people are bogged out, man. I'm gonna end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Dash. Double understood the apostle and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Shalom.